Welcome back to C Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This time we're going to stay with our methods but add parameters. Okay, so let's start with a very basic example. Let's say we just want a void method that's going to print a number. So we know that in our method we're going to print something. So let's just go ahead and print a number. Here, let's call print number and then make sure everything works. And we've got a method that prints a number. Now suppose we get our number from user input. So we're not actually going to do that, but let's say that the user number comes in from the console and it's going to be some number here. And we want to print that number. So we want this to be able to go into print number so print number can print it. So to do that, we'll use a parameter. So a parameter's format is type, space, variable name. So we need to pass an int into print number. So in our parameters list, we'll add an int and then a variable name, we'll just call number. And now the minute this parameter is defined here, this goes red because there is no argument that corresponds to the required parameter number. So this here is a required parameter. Now we'll go over optional parameters later, but for now, you cannot call this method without this parameter. So all you have to do is take this variable we declared before and pass it into print number. Okay, so now that we have a defined parameter and we have a method call that passes that parameter, we need to use the parameter because right now Visual Studio thinks we can remove the parameter because the scope of this method never uses it. So what we want to do is print the number that's given to us. So let's replace the one with number. And now when we run it, instead of printing one, it's going to print our one, two, three, four. So we're pretending this came from user input. So if we took a console read line here and then passed that into here, it would print whatever the user gave us. So say instead of printing a number, we wanted to take two numbers from the user, add those numbers together, and then print the result. So let's add a second user input, user number two, and that would be something the user would give us. And now let's, instead of printing a number, let's say add, actually let's just say print result. And now we need a second parameter to take this other user number. So to do that, all you have to do is add a comma and then another parameter. So type space variable name. So these variable names have to be unique within this scope. So we'll call it number two. Now we'll change print result up here. And now this is going to be incorrect because we need two parameters. You can see that print result takes two parameters here. So now we will pass in with a comma, our user number two. So here we have the type and the variable name, but when we call it, we only need the variable names. So now in here, we can use both. So we can say int result equals number plus number two. And then we can write the result. So now when we run it, it's going to pass both of them in, add them together and print the result. Okay, so now say we wanted to customize the result with a user's name if the user gives us the name. So we'll say string username equals, let's say that's Kampa. And now down here, we're going to add a string parameter that's going to be the name. And then in here, let's format our result with a string result string equals, and we'll say result for concatenate the name is and then concatenate the result. So it's going to say result for Kampa is and then the addition between these two numbers and then we'll write the result string. So now up here in print result we need a third parameter. So let's put a comma and add our username. So now our print result takes three parameters, does some math, formats a result, and then prints it. 
So now our method's doing multiple things for us in one nice little package. So now let's say that the user isn't required to give us their name. So let's make this third parameter optional. So optional parameters have to be at the end of your parameter list. You cannot put an optional parameter, say, here. And I'll show you that in just a second. So to do an optional parameter, the format is type variable name equals default value. So we're going to actually declare a variable in here. So we'll say string name equals user, just like that. So what this says is we have a required parameter number, a required parameter number two, and then an optional parameter name, meaning we can either give it the name and it will change this value to what we give it, or we don't have to give it a name at all. So this is valid because we have three parameters and Campa would be replacing user in that case. But also we could say print result user number, user number two, just like that. And now this is also valid. We don't have to give it the third parameter at all because this exists as a default value. So if I comment this out and run it, you'll see it will say result for user is 3579. And now if I switch them and use my value here as a parameter, then it will use Campi instead. Like I mentioned before, optional parameters have to be at the end of the list. And you can have multiples. I could say int another number equals 24. And that's valid too, because all of my optional parameters are at the end. But I couldn't say my first int number equals 45, because now there's an error because optional parameters must appear after all required parameters. Now that you've seen optional parameters, I just want to throw in that they're more of a little more of an intermediate topic and you probably won't need to use them very much. Most of the time you're going to have values for your parameters. I just wanted to throw them in there because they can be really useful and they can save a lot of time in certain situations. Before we wrap up, I just want to throw out a best practices tip to keep your code nice and clean and readable, and that's that you usually don't want to do program logic like addition and formatting and things like that in the same method that you do user interface interactions like writing to the console. Keeping these separate will make testing easier, it will make debugging easier, it will make a lot of things easier for you down the road. So let's use what we learned from last time and instead of return type void, let's use return type string. And instead of writing our string out here, let's write our string up here. And now let's return our result string. And from print result, let's get our result string into a variable. So now this method only does the logic and the print happens after the method is called. Just like that. So the last thing you would want to do in this situation is change your method name. Since this is not printing, you wouldn't want to get confused. So let's change this from print result to get result. And honestly, you would probably want a better name in your code, depending on exactly what purpose this had. You may want to say get formatted math result or get formatted addition result or you know something that makes your code readable and that you know exactly what's happening just from reading your method name. So next up we're going to talk about overloading methods to where we can use the same method name in different ways. Thank you for watching everybody. I do appreciate you. Hopefully this has been helpful. Happy coding and until next time as always take care.